Alright guys, welcome back. I spent only a few minutes back at home, anxiously awaiting Nazuki's arrival. Before I know it, she texts me to let me know she's outside the front door. Without delay, I open the front door to let her in. Sup? Hey. I don't know what I was expecting, but seeing Nazuki in something other than her school uniform totally threw me off. Seeing her in such cute clothes makes the uniform seem totally unfitting in comparison. Jeez, don't make it feel so awkward already. It's going to be a long afternoon, so don't be weird just because you're not used to seeing me outside of school. Anyway, I'm coming in. I see you brought a lot of stuff. Azuki is carrying a large bag that is probably full of baking supplies. Well, I didn't want to come all this way to find out that your kitchen isn't equipped for the job. You bought everything I asked you to, right? Yeah, I did. Yesterday, Nazuki asked me to buy a bunch of ingredients if I didn't already have them at home. Good. Glad I could count on you to do your part. Well, of course. I'm surprised to hear Nazuki suddenly say that rather than something snarky like she usually does. Could it be that she is a little different outside of school after all? Anyway, let's go to the kitchen. What? You're not even going to offer to take this heavy bag for me? Where's your hospitality, Jason? Come on. Since when did I need to be a gentleman? I grab the bag Natsuki holds out to me. <laughs> this is ridiculously heavy. <laughs> I carried that all the way here. Are you impressed? I see now. Yeah, I am impressed, Nazuki. Seems like I always underestimate you. Hehehe. <laughs> it's because I'm so small, isn't it? You jerk. Nazuki hits a fist into my chest. Hey, hey. Your size has nothing to do with it. Do you really hate being small that much? Eh? Um, it's not like I hate it. I mean, sometimes I like proving people wrong when they only think I'm worth my size. It's fun when I get to be small and also better than other people. But, geez, never mind. What are you making me say? Don't think you can make me talk about weird things just because we're not at school. Are we getting started or what? There's a lot of stuff I gotta teach you. Ahaha. <laughs> What? That's a little bit more like you. You're more fun when you just speak your mind like that. Hey. Now you are treating me like a kid. I was just trying to be a little nicer to you, you know? And just because I don't have a mature and sexy figure like Yuri doesn't mean you should treat me like... Uh... Azuki catches her words and her face turns red. Nazuki? Forget it. I didn't say anything. I should apologize. Hey. I appreciate that you were trying to be nicer. I should have been a little more considerate too. But also, if that's what you're thinking, then you should know that there are tons of guys who are into body types like yours. Uh. How would... You know that, anyway. Just trust me on this one. Gross. Hey. Was that to me? Who else? Man. Let's just get started already. Uh -huh. You get all sour when a girl calls you gross. I finally found your weakness, Jason. Azuki smiles deviously. Please spare me. Well, if Nazuki decides to diss out more insults like that, there's no way I'm not fighting back. But she's satisfied enough for now. Finally starting to pull things out of her bag so we can get started. Before long, the whole kitchen is a mess. 
Spoons, dirty bowls, flour, spilled fluid, and plastic bags are strewn about every corner top. The mixer isn't big enough to make all the batter at once, so we've had to do it several times. Meanwhile, Nasuki is babysitting all of my movements to make sure I don't mess up her precious baking. Jason, where did you put the food coloring? The batter is going in the oven soon, so I need to fill the trays. I think it's still in the bag next to the table. What are you using it for? To color the batter, of course. I'm making each tray a different color. That way, even if the flavors aren't different, everyone can still pick their favorite. Ah, huh, that's a cute idea. Are we doing anything like that with the icing? Do you want to? Uh, you're asking me? I don't really have a preference, so... Come on. You're not putting any heart into this at all. Can't you at least try to have fun? I'm having fun. I'm not really sure what Nazuki is trying to get out of me. Meanwhile, I see her separate the batter into smaller bowls and put a few drops of food coloring into each. Ah, that does look pretty cool. See? It's not like baking is just about following instructions. The presentation is where you get to be creative and have the most fun. It's a million times more worth it in the end if just looking at it makes everyone's eyes lighten up. Like the ones you made on my first day, huh? I recall Nazuki proudly presenting her cat-shaped cupcakes and Sayori and Monica's delighted expressions. I wonder if I can make Nazuki proud like that too. Yeah? Maybe I will use the food coloring then. Sounds like you're starting to understand. Just make sure you completely finish mixing the icing before you mess with the food coloring. Yeah, it's getting there. We were using the electric mixer for the batter, so I got stuck with a whisk and a huge bowl for the icing. Hey, the icing's still all lumpy. Are you even trying? Well, yeah. It'll just take a little longer. Jeez, I'll be here all night if you do it like that. Here, look. Nazuki grabs the whisk for me and uses her other hand to tilt the bowl back. You really need to beat the crap out of it. After a few seconds, the consistency of the icing has already improved. See? As if to emphasize, Nazuki sticks a finger in the icing and pops it in her mouth. I reluctantly start to do the same. Hey! Nazuki suddenly grabs my wrists. I don't want your gross fingers in my icing. Your icing, eh? Are you forgetting who did all the work? I start to fight back, trying to inch my finger in towards the bowl. Don't make me beat the crap out of you next. I'd like to see you try. I push harder, just enough for my finger to reach the icing. I triumphantly scoop some of my finger just as Nazuki tugs with it all her might. Ah. The force of Nazuki pulling me causes me to stumble, making her stumble in turn. Gross. You got it on my face. Whose fault is that? There's a big glob of icing on Nazuki's cheek. Hmm. She tries to reach it with her tongue, but it's too far away. <laughs> Jeez. You know what? Take this. Nazuki instead wipes it off with her finger before shoving her finger towards my own face. You wish. I'm faster. I grab her wrist with my hand before it reaches my face. Nazuki tries to use her other hand to fight back, but I grab that one as well. Ah, uh -huh, stop. Not until you apologize for calling me gross. Fine, fine. I'm sorry for calling you gross. You know I don't mean it. It's just fun seeing you react to it. You do that to me all the time, you know. 
saying dumb things just to get a reaction out of me. You really shouldn't tease girls like that. Is that so? In that case, I probably shouldn't do this either. I take Nazuki's finger and put it in my mouth, licking off the icing. What? Did you seriously just... Uh... Nazuki is so surprised that she can't even figure out how to get mad at me. Her face is entirely red. Jason? You really shouldn't do that kind of thing to girls. Unless you really like them. You know that, right? What kind of question is she asking me? Just like that. How did the mood turn to this so quickly? I... Azuki gazes at me in silence. I notice her shallow breaths. Why am I starting to feel dizzy? Hey. I don't know where the fire alarm starts going off. Nazuki rushes over to the oven. Is something burning? I thought you didn't put the cupcakes in yet. Cough. No wonder. You left a dirty tray in here, dummy. How could you make a mistake like that? You should have checked before turning the oven on. Don't blame me for your mistakes. Jeez. Azuki uses an oven mitt to grab the blackened tray out of the oven. She sets it on top of the stove. In another moment, the fire alarm stops. Anyway, I'm putting them in the oven now. Yeah. The tension from the moment before still lingers over our heads. But the moment has already been lost. I watch as Nazuki slides the cupcake trays into the oven. Then I reluctantly pick up the whisk and continue with the icing like nothing ever happened. Ah, that smells so good. The cupcakes are ready to be pulled out of the oven. As soon as Natsuki opens the oven door, a blast of sweet smelling warm air fills the room. Look at how cute they all look. She proudly shows off the different colored cupcakes in each of the trays. They look even better once we add the icing. Not like you need to tell me that. I brought decorating stuff, so I hope you can get creative. Here, scoop the icing into these bags. Nazuki hands me some plastic bags. I have these nozzles that will make it look nice and fluffy. This one can even make flowers. We probably won't be using it this time though. What's this one for? I pick up one of the nozzles that has a much thinner tip than the others. That one's really thin, so you can use it to make stripes or other patterns. But you can also use it to write stuff on a cake. Like happy birthday or whatever. Huh, I see. That gives me an idea, actually. Eh? Well, it's a literature event, right? We can make it more literature themed by writing a different word on each of the cupcakes. It would be fun to see people choose their cupcake based on the word they like. You... Hmm. I was kind of expecting you to say something really stupid. But that's actually a really cute idea, so... <laughs> Maybe I'm getting it from you? What's that supposed to mean? I'm not cute. Come on. We're not at school. Nobody's judging. You can't dress and act like this and not expect me to think you're cute. Well, Nazuki's voice trails off. Same with you. Eh? Did you say something? No, no, nothing. Let's just do the icing. Nazuki picks up the pace and fastens a nozzle onto each of the bags. There's a lot to do, so we shouldn't be wasting time. Here, I'll show you how to do it. Without giving me a chance to think about before, Nazuki quickly moves on. She shows me how to apply the icing, 
and then we each get to work. When we're finally finished, Nazuki pulls them all side by side to admire our work. Look how pretty they are together. Yeah, they are, aren't they? You... I wish I could have one now. Well, there's no reason you can't, right? I don't see any harm in that. Well, yeah, but... My dad's making dinner tonight, so I really need to save my appetite. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sayori's the exact opposite in that regard. If she was here, we'd probably be down to 10 cupcakes already. And she would still eat dinner. Come on, that's just unhealthy. Besides, when my dad cooks, I need to eat as much of it as I can. Well, anyway, I was hoping we would have time for manga. I need to be home for dinner. Uh, already? That's a shame. It's your fault for working so slowly. You should have thought about that. It's not like you always have this chance. Man. As usual, Nazuki places the blame on me. You can bring the cupcakes tomorrow, right? If you and Sayori each carry some, then you could probably do it in one trip. Yeah, I can do that. And don't worry, I won't let her eat any. <laughs> I wish she would listen to me the way she listens to you. Huh? Yeah. I again think back to the conversation I had with Sayori earlier today. I felt so helpless. Sayori always does listen to me, but at that point it felt like she couldn't listen to me at all. Okay, I'm all packed up. Good work today. You too. I'll walk you out, I guess. Alright guys, I'll end it here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.